It always seems when the world focuses on something really wrong, that something else pops up to misdirect people's attention. It's called diversion. Well, we may have a case of diversion right now, or we may have something that could turn into a disaster. Or worse, we don't know. That something is called Ebola. And what the world is not supposed to look at is what's been going on in Gaza. If you remember, Malaysian Airlines flight MH17 was blown out of the sky, clearly now by the Kiev Ukraine military. There's, there's little doubt about it now. On the same day that the Israeli government, against the wishes of many Israelis, decided to annihilate the Gaza Strip and cleanse it once and for all. We do believe that that's the plan. Misdirection. MH17, tremendous amount of interest in that tragedy, for obvious reasons. Ebola, huge interest, for obvious reasons. We have two known Ebola cases here in Emory University's hospital in Atlanta. I guess the second one is en route now, the woman. These people, the doctor, 33-year-old Dr. Brantley, and the woman, I believe she's in her early 60s, were working in Africa as part of a philanthropical organization's charitable work. Let's just put it that way. We'll get into this more later. But they're both infected. They're both coming back here. Dr. Brantley is here. He was described in grave condition, and yet he was able to walk off the the uh, ambulance and walk right into the hospital without much difference uh, between he and the other medical assistant that was with the doctor. Uh, interesting observation. We also have many breaking news stories. They're all up at the top of rents.com in the center column. Please look avail yourself of what we know. Uh, both patients are said to be doing better now, both American patients. Meantime, a woman got off a plane at Gatwick Airport in, in London and apparently quite literally fell over dead after vomiting and exercising a lot of very unfavorable conditions on the airplane during the flight. They say she's negative. Do we believe that? I don't know. I don't trust most anyone except Henry Nyman anymore, as far as telling the truth about disease and viral infection and contagion. At any rate, this is a very big story, as you well know. There's a lot of panic. I just got a story from someone, uh, Scott Teeters, in fact, a host on the network here. Thank you, Scott. That a company that owns an Ebola drug has seen its stock skyrocket. What a shock. All right? So, uh, when these things happen, if you're on your feet, you can make some money, too. Uh, we don't know where this is going. It's the tip of the iceberg. Annually, every year, several hundred thousand people die from normal influenza. We've had about 800, give or take, die of Ebola in Africa so far. We don't know where it's going. So far, it's uh, you know, a scratch on the iceberg. But it has the potential to do some really ugly things. All right, Henry, that's as... Enough of an intro for you. you you're a, a master of virology. Henry Nyman, if you don't know, is the founder of Recombinomics.com, uh, given uh, credit by most intelligent people in the scientific community in the world as being one of the world's premier, if not the premier, true and honest virologist. And we're very honored to have Henry with us quite often on the program. Okay, my friend, let's tell him what it's all about. Well, today, today definitely was the uh, biggest news day, <laughs> and, and and there's quite a bit going on today, and um, and it's actually quite a bit that that we already know about the, uh, the Ebola outbreak and uh, where it began, how it evolved, uh, where it stands today, and uh, why it's causing as much concern as it is, and uh, we actually already. <laughs> Know quite a bit about the uh, miracle treatment, actually, which is a, a, a cocktail of three mouse monoclonal antibodies directed mm -hmm. against the uh, the envelope protein of the uh, um, uh, Ebola virus. Which and is a so, it's a variant from the Zaire Ebola, isn't it? There's a little difference in this particular well, Ebola strain. Yes and no. The, the, the basically the the uh, the most uh, deadly. 
uh, Ebola virus is from Zaire. And, okay. um, and, and that particular clade has uh, caused the most deadliest uh, outbreaks as well as the largest number of outbreaks. And, um, uh, and that is essentially what is um, currently in Western Africa. But the, the virus changes a little bit each time. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, the e- e- Ebola is actually <clears throat> named for the Ebola River, which is in uh, Zaire. At, at the time, I think it was the um, Belgian Congo. I, I don't know. The, the, it's the Democratic Republic. Well, Congo they change now. names over there. Pretty right. Often, it's, yeah. You know, of the two Congos, it's the big one. And in any event, the virus was named. After the river and the first outbreak was um, actually in 1976, and and prior to um, this outbreak, that one produced the most uh, number of deaths. And then uh, 19 years later, 1995, there was another big outbreak uh, also in Zaire, and that one produced the second highest uh, number of uh, fatalities. And then the current outbreak uh, easily eclipsed both of them combined, and uh, it is again the uh, the Zaire clade, but it's um, you know slightly different. So, so you can basically distinguish this one from the other two, uh-huh. but um, they're still very close to each other and very different than some of the other outbreaks that that happened in in Sudan, Sudan or Uganda. Those, those were very distinct. Uh, different clay. So, so the one that's, that's been the deadliest and the one that produces the highest case fatality rate um, and uh, the one that's produced the most number of outbreaks are all um, the Zaire clay, and, and that's what's causing all the problems right now. Right. And part of the reason there's as much concern as there is is because, um, like I said, the the number of dead is, um, is I guess, it's about nine hundred now. And uh, those two big outbreaks that, that I told you about that had the record that together, they did about six hundred. So it's already one and a half times. You got a seventy five percent mortality rate. About but, too, right? yeah, but but the number that well, it, it bounces around. It, it's around fifty to sixty percent right now. Okay. The 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 um, the first one in 76 was actually 88%. And uh, the second one, I think, was in the 70s or so. This one's more in the 50 to 60s. But, um, but, but that's a little bit off because there's, there, there's still a lot of patients that are in the hospital. So, so, so the two numbers I mentioned before, that was on uh, known outcome. That, that was basically either, the, the patient either got discharged from the hospital or died. And uh, a lot of the cases in the current outbreak um, are in the hospital. And so the, the, the case fatality rate you see that, that pops up is actually a little lower than it, it really is because many of the people in the hospital um, are going to die. Well, they're, yeah, they're not resolved, so it's, they're still lingering. Right, right. And, and, and so the, the rate that you're seeing now, which is I think the latest was 57% or something, that assumes that everybody in the hospital survives. And, and, and that's certainly not going to happen. So it, it's probably closer to um, sixty to seventy percent, and similar to the um, to the nineteen ninety five outbreak. And, and, and actually, these monoclonal antibodies were were generated against the uh, the virus from the the uh, nineteen ninety five outbreak. But um, the, basically, the timing of this is. Um, is pretty straightforward. The, the, there was a paper that came out in the New England Journal of Medicine on April 16th, and that pretty much um, described the uh, the initial cases, which at that time, uh, most of the information they had, or, or at least most of the samples they collected, um, were from Guinea. And and Guinea is was really the start, and... and you know, most people don't realize this, but the uh, the initial case was actually in December of um, of uh, 2013, and it was a uh, it was a two year old child and um, who got uh, symptomatic on December second and died on December sixth, and then um, 
many family members, his sister, his mother, his grandmother, the nurse, the village midwife, all ended up dying in that in that village, which was um uh Gukadu, which was um really in the southern part of Guinea. And um and then the numbers started to go up and it was really a healthcare worker that, that seemed to really spread it to three other uh locations that were also in Guinea. And uh, all of these locations were um, just across the border from uh, both Sierra Leone as well as Liberia. So this outbreak was a little bit unusual from the other ones, which only involved one country, in that the epicenter was really kind of at the juncture of three different countries. And, And so it offered the opportunity where you really could get people infected in three different countries. And then um, all three countries had their capitals on the, on the Western coast, quite, quite a ways away from where these cases were. Right. So for, for those that wanted to go to the, you know, the larger hospitals that were in the capital cities and that, that prevented, presented the opportunity for it to go from, you know, a relatively rural isolated area into um, large population centers in three different countries, kind of almost simultaneously. So the the paper went through some detail. It it had collected samples from um, 15 of the cases, and by the time they started collecting the samples, those early early cases had had died, and and they were really um, focusing on cases in mid-March. And um, and they took um, samples from uh, I think there were uh, sixteen cases. They got samples from fifteen, I think. Fourteen out of the sixteen died, so it, it, it had a, a very high case fatality rate. Um, they collected samples from um, that they were able to isolate the virus from three of the patients, including the the two survivors as well as a, a, um, a fatal case. And they were all in mid-March. And um, they were two di- distinct areas. The, the, they were, but in spite of that, they were um, all essentially the same. So, so they were all this same subclade indicating there was a single introduction. And these would have all traced back to this two-year-old child from December. So, so the numbers started low and... Um, and slowly built up, and then a healthcare worker, um, you know, infected patients where she was working, and then uh, she went into another hospital, and then she had contact with another family, and 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 so it kind of spread to like four different villages um, as a result of that one person, and um, and then it started to you know make the news more because. You really had multiple locations in Guinea, but then you had uh, cases in Liberia as well as Sierra Leone. So that is probably one of the main reasons that things um, got so so large as far as the number of cases are concerned, is, is that you really had um, three different outbreaks, if you will, going at the same time. They all were were very close to each other geographically, but they were actually in um, uh, three different countries. And so you started with those three sequences that came out that that showed that they were all very similar. And then recently, just in the last couple of weeks, um, 14 more sequences came out of Sierra Leone. And these were done um, by um, a a group at Harvard and MIT. And, uh, they released those sequences a couple of weeks ago. And a comparison of those sequences um, to each other, they, they were actually all collected on June 1st. And all 14 of these sequences were uh, were virtually identical to each other. And they had shown a little bit of evolution or drift away from the ones that were collected in March.